Tarakan 2, the final fight. Well, apart from Tarakan 3. As I alluded to just now, Tarakan 2 is part of a series starting off with Tarakan on the Commodore 64, uh, showing you on screen now. A fantastic run and gun with eight directional scrolling and lots of power ups. Coded by Manfred Trent on the 64 and then ported to the Amiga, the ST, Amstrad CPC, and ZX Spectrum. A huge hit game on all those formats. Obviously, Rainbow Arts thought, hmm, let's have another game. So Turrican 2 was produced again by Manfred Trent starting on the C64, but we're going to begin with the Amiga version, just because it's one of those games that you first saw on the 16 bits in my case, and went, oh wow, this looks something special. In my case, I saw it on my mate's ST, and it has this amazing soundtrack by Chris Hulsbeck, and he had a custom driver on the Amiga to give him more flexibility with the sounds. Well, perhaps that was the ST. Anyway, they did something on one of these versions. So you can see the character running along and shooting the enemies, just to give you an idea of the game. And that nice attract screen and also a sequence in all the versions giving an animation of what the game's plot is but you don't need that start the game there's a bit of disc accessing and all looking very familiar versus Tarakan one you start with a pretty weedy weapon but as you'll know from the Tarakin games, there's stuff hidden around all over the place. And here we go. Go left and pick up a load of power-ups. Uh, you can have the standard shooting like this, or you can press the fire button and stand still and unleash a kind of a directional laser. And you can also press the space bar and turn into a, a wheelie a bladed thing that kills everything and is indestructible. So amazingly on the Amiga here, the main game ooh, sprites are 16 colours, but there are actually up to 120 colours on the screen at any one time because of all the Amiga's fancy hardware tricks. The base panel is 16 colours to save memory. 50 frames a second scrolling, of course fairly easy to achieve on the Amiga, but how will the ST fare? And yes, it's a more of a bleepy S-A-Y rendition of the Tarakan music but it is this special custom driver I think it's about 10 samples uh, included in the gameplay when you're playing on the ST ST version runs at 25 frames a second but it still has 8 directional scrolling at that frame rate by, I think it says it manages to pass through the screen 8 times and then does something special with the game sprites in order to achieve this with the limited hardware, the zero hardware assistance on the ST. There's a PC version released in 1995. I have played it, but uh, Warren Pilkington has kindly done the capture for this for me. Because I could only get it working under emulation. I'll explain a bit in a bit. The music is ported straight from the Amiga. And uh, 60 frames a second scrolling. Well, your main sprite looks a bit cutesy compared to the Amiga version. There's something a bit too polished about this PC version. Despite having a 256 colours on the screen and all that lovely VGA goodness, it still manages to look less attractive than the Amiga. And yes, I know C64 owners will already be complaining I haven't featured their version yet, but here we go. The original version. All the other versions are based on this. All the level layouts were done on the C64 and then just simply straight ported across to the Amiga ST and PC and the other uh, abs and Spectrum versions. Far more crude as you'd expect, but this is the base version of the game. I believe, I think it was the last game that Manfred Trent did for the C64. Don't quote me on that. The game is nearly entirely recoded from Tarakan 1, apart from the scrolling routine. But everything else has been redone, even if you think it is looking a bit familiar. 
Level 1 also on all these versions feels very close to the levels on Tarakin 1. I think it's to give you a familiar start, or at least the, the first section of the level. Collect the diamonds, and if you, I think if you get 50, you get continues over to the Sinclair Spectrum, uh, coded by Enigma variations, and only works on 128k spectrums. And yes, it's a multi-load, and, and a particular horrible multi-load as well, because if you, when you, if when you lose all your lives, even if you're on level one, you've got to reload all of level one again. I've fallen down the waterfall. Yeah, there's no 25 or 50 frames a second animation on this version. All the graphics seem to have been designed to avoid color clash. Views on the Spectrum version are mixed. Your Sinclair gave it 92% on the original release, but then 59% on the re-release, with John Pillar saying the game wasn't fun to play and it had lost the original's sense of loony fun. SU also gave it 75%, criticising the lack of originality. But we're over to the Amstrad version, where this is an Amstrad Action Mega game, and a game I played with the demo version that gave you the first section of level one, up to the big baddie. Oh, spoilers. Um, the first big bounty you see. And I have to say, I was impressed when I got the demo. The Amstrad version seems to have a, a slight degree of 8x8 pixel action because it's come across in the Spectrum version where they've designed everything to avoid color clash. But it's not a specky port. It has got that slightly chunky weirdness to it when you make your games like that. It's occasionally evident in, let's see if we can find something all designed to destroy this thing here with my laser, which is the one you just hold down fire for and then control. Yeah, I think on some of the landscape bits, you can see, there you go, there's an 8x8 block down there. Everything's kind of little 8x8 characters on the Amstrad version. I think you'd only ever notice it if you'd seen that Spectrum version and gone, hang on, oh, I see why they've done this. I love this game, as they're giving it a 95% master game. Uh, it was released uh, uh, later in the year than the other versions, or the other versions apart from the PC, which you're looking at now. Amstrad Action reviewed it in August 91, and it was on budget by June 1992. So Warren Pilkerton has kind of captured this for me, because this is a bit of a difficult game to get running properly. Um, I couldn't get it running on my DX4, uh, because it's a laptop, and Tarkin 2 doesn't like laptops. And also, it, I had problems with just getting it onto... Finding an image that was all separated so I could get it across on disk. Anyway, back onto the Amiga. And here's the Spectrum version with the... This is the kind of first big baddie in the game you meet. And he looks intimidating, but he's really easy to destroy. And like all the Tarakan games, there are power-ups hidden. And uh, they're very generous. So as soon as you've defeated this, I'm on the 64 now. As you usually defeat this baddie, there's a power-up located to the right-hand side, hidden by a, a snake thing. So just down here. Destroy the snake thing. And there you go, power-up. The game is very generous with extra lives, but you do need to find them. What's a bit fiddly there? Come on, so you need to get up here. Come on, come on. And the game also tends to drop things down on you from above that you can't see. And when you get close to the top of the screen, you can't see what's above on all the versions, which means you can be jumping into death. Should I go through that platform? Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay. No, I can't. I've done right. Okay. So I jump down here, and on the C64, there's just one color as you come out of here. But let me show you when you come down here on the Amiga, it's a lovely uh, full copper effect. So 50 diamonds, as I say, will get you uh, a restart credit. C64 version really needs some music. It really does. And we're on the ST. 
And just look how many colors are on the screen on the ST as well. It's easy to get impressed by the Amiga version because wow. But the ST, for the ST, is holding its own here. Power up there. It's not always advantageous to pick up weapons power ups because you may get a weapon that isn't as good for the section you're in. But there's a copper style effect going on in the background on the ST. It's not as nice, but it looks it looks good. It looks good. The screen is slightly shrunk down. And if you drop down here, there should be a power up. Extra life. Lovely stuff. And there are extra lives scattered everywhere in the game. Over to the Amstrad. Looking very pink. Amstrad Spectrum versions also suffer like the C64 of a lack of tune during the game. And I think I'm right in saying this is a 128k only game on the Amstrad, which somewhat restricts your sales. Over to the PC. And you do have to have Sound Blast 16 to get this Amiga soundtrack. They appear to have taken the Amiga tracker code and just used the same samples on the PC. Hate this section. Because you've got to memorise where you're going. And, and Warren says, when he's playing this, uh, all the secrets in levels in the levels are exactly the same place, including the two extra one-ups. You get for destroying a hidden a way large enemy in level 1.2. We're back on the Amiga. And if you want to run it in DOSBox, you need around 50,000 cycles to get the game working properly. Auto does not cut it. And as I say, you need to have the right type of graphics card as well, because if you've got a PC with a PC uh, laptop uh, graphics card, um, it's that you actually warns you in the original uh, documentation with the game that it may not, you may get some graphics corruption. And also, uh, Warren mentions, and I found this as well, playing with the keyboard on the PC is horrible. It's terrible. It's absolutely awful. But on the Amiga, you've got a joystick, so that's what I'm playing with here. Level layouts are fairly logical. You are led through them. You can get a little bit lost. And the game has a 1,000 second timer. And when that drops to zero, you lose a life, but you will restart in the same position. It can be advantageous if you want to explore levels to let that timer run down uh, while you're exploring, not just waiting around. Because you may get by using that timer up uh, lots of power-ups that are hidden away in the levels. Level 1, for example, there's a whole section if you go up and left, and we get loads of power-ups, including extra lives. But if you go in that section, your timer will run out before completing level 1. This is a good example of where to use your spinny bladey thing, where you're rolling along the ground, there's lots of things dropping out the sky. Oh, the other power-up you get is the um, kind of smart bomb thing that you can activate at any time which I've got one at the moment. We're on the PC again with Warren Pilkington doing the honours under emulation. Yes, I know it's emulation, I'm sorry. But some games are just too hard to get working. Especially if you're using a DX4 laptop, like I do. This came out in 1995 on the PC, so you can see why there was criticism about how it looked dated by this time. Yep, 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 that's game over for Warren, I'm afraid. And that's as far as we're going to see on the PC version. So, we are back on the ST. Just exploring this mazy section. The levels are absolutely massive on this game, on all the versions. All the levels, as I mentioned, that would... Oh, I dropped down there. And I'm afraid, because I've got no cheats on the Atari ST, that's game over. For the ST version. Very hard to find a working version on the ST as well that worked in real hardware. Um, I've downloaded lots and lots of images of the game. And uh, I think eventually, uh, maybe Warren again, who sent me that ST version, actually worked. 
C64 version, end of level one baddie. You have to shoot this eye at the top. And on the Amiga. Just repetition and timing here, really. There's not much else you can do. Turning yourself into an invincible spinny bladey thing for the end of level baddies doesn't work because they've always got a sensitive spot you need to hit the map and usually it's just out of range of your shooty laser thing that I'm trying to use here it is a question of just shooting that eyeball there we go there were Mega Drive and uh, Game Boy versions of Tower 2 g as well um, and they were coded but late in the day Accolade the publisher of those versions wanted the game to be changed to turn it into a Universal Soldier game because they got a license to that movie. So that's what they did. And the games are sufficiently different enough as a result, but I'm not including them here. Um, there's some later levels that have been completely replaced. Uh, there's, some, there's a lot of similarities, though. Perhaps we'll look at those another day. Just dropping down where I'm completely invincible like this. And you do, when you've got the spinny thing, you are, um, you have less control and you will bounce past stuff like, I think I bounced past a, an extra life there. Oh, big fish. Like Jaws. There we go. All right, oh, lots of diamonds. Amiga Action, incidentally, gave this game 86%. Where all the other Amiga magazines gave it reviews in the in the 90s. And um, they criticised the game because it was a sequel. But if you look at the screenshots in Amiga Action, I'm on the 64 now, you will notice that they don't appear to have got even 25% of the way through level 1 on the screenshots. So I'm not sure how much they actually played Hurricane 2. And on the Amstrad... Difficult to see on this Amstrad version or this this level which parts are background and which parts are scenery. You think those bit b blocks there are potentially scenery, but no, they are background. And this this confusion will occur again, where there's bits of level where you think, are they baddies? Are they backgrounds? Are they things I can jump on? It just gets a little bit too messy at times. Oh, here's a baddie. Keep shooting. I'm taking hits on my energy there. When you lose a life, your weapons will also scale back. So that's worth bearing in mind. What well, if I can just jump on him on the spectrum and just annihilate him? There we go. We can do that, I think. That. Uh, get it right. Let's get it right. Come on. Come on. Flashing purple. Flashing purple. Oh, I must be done by now, surely. Come on, come on, come on. Look at you. Hey, I've done it. That's a mid-level bounty for level two. See, that Mr. Blobby spiky monster thing's very messy. And again, now I'm sinking into the background. They thought about Color Clash, but only so that level one can look really colorful and nice. And in fact, was that the end of level bounty totally? I think it was. Anyway, we're on the Amiga now. Let's try and annihilate him. Soon find out. There we go, right. Although all versions can load, I think, past the way through levels. Because this is an absolutely massive game. So rolled my way through there. Exit over here. Oh, that's fast. Getting the birdie swinging around my head there because it went down so fast. I mean, there is a criticism of Tarakan 2 that it's... I mean, I get the point that it's not particularly original. And there are lots of run-and-gun games available by this time. But this is done so well. Because although the game is ludicrously hard and unfair in places, and a memory test, 
it rewards exploration. As I say, if you can run your timer down and sacrifice a life, you will be rewarded with extra lives. We need to talk about Chris Chilsbeck's superb soundtrack on the Amiga. It's amazing. Right, so there's some kind of jumping thing here. What's these leaves? Do I have to jump up in time with these leaves? Oh, I've landed on that. Mm, what do I have to do here? Oh, 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 okay. Okay, so you jump in time with the leaves. Up to jump games like Zub. I'm usually good at these. I'm not very good at it here. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, turn yourself into the spinny thing there. Also, when you're the spinny thing, you can drop uh, little bombs. But the thing about being the spinny thing is you have to reach for the space bar. Which, if you're sitting on the floor with lots of machines in front of you, is easier said than done on some of these versions. So you might think I'm not using my spinny thing and my uh, smart bombs at the right moments. It's because there's a delay between me wanting to do it and having to lean forward to the correct machine and press the button. So we've done that leaf blurry thing on the Amstrad version. Come up the wrong side. I think I've come up the wrong side. Well, have I? Have I? Oh, I've again, see things at the top of the screen, you jump into them and you die. I think I'm at the right side. I can see why I like the demo of this Amstrad version. That first part of level one is really cool, and seeing the big baddies. But there's a lack of something here on the Amstrad and the Spectrum versions. They're both well presented. It's, it's more than just lack of music. But if you had only had those machines at the time, you'd probably be more than happy with them. I've dropped down again. Oh, hang on. Right, okay. Power up. Down we go. And shoot my way through. Yeah, on the Amstrad, I, I'm guessing it, it could be playing Strider. That's the end of that level there, with that section. Yes, it's, without those bells and whistles of the Amiga version, I think sometimes Turrican 2 is a little bit exposed. And now into the shoot 'em up section, level four. And you weren't expecting this, were you? And of course, on the 64, it's done properly. And actually, we now have music. It's Cacatist, isn't it? The game that Manfred Trents and Bainbow Arts developed and then had to be pulled because it was obviously an R-type ripoff. But we're here, and he's snuck it into this game and no one's noticed. Wow, and it, look at it, it's amazing. Loads of power-ups, interesting baddies, parallax scrolling. And on the Amiga, it's even better. Look at it. This is gorgeous. Just think how many people never saw this because they never got to level four of Tarakan 2. Wow, this should be a separate game in its own. Well, it was. <laughs> and yeah, this is extra hard on the lives, but there are many, many power -ups. Spectrum version. Scrolling is a bit meh, but again, it's nice. Is it R-Type on the Spectrum? Actually, no, it's not. It's just, it lacks something, but it's nice. I mean, Enigma Variations have had to code a whole different game. You know, imagine being given the Turrican 2 conversion job and then realising you've got to do a running gun game and a, a scrolling shoot 'em up and perhaps that's why that's the end of level baddie for level four. Perhaps that's why the scrolling is a little bit ropey because it's one engine. Eyeballs coming at me. Come on, I've got infinite lives on the Amstrad version. We're going to get to the end of this game no matter what. I don't have cheats in all these versions. Well, as you've seen from the ST. Why doesn't the game have this superb music during the run-along sections on the 64? It would add so much.
Off we go again. Loads of power-ups. This is lovely stuff. It, really is, it has to be said on the 64. Do not attempt to try and play this off tape. It's a German C64 game. It was coded with discs in mind. There is, and I'm a cartridge port, an unofficial one, which I'm playing this off of. Amstrad version, where this level with its kind of multi-directional eight-way scrolling isn't working so well. It's a little bit too fast. It kind of squeezes you into the corner and kills you at times. But again, you can often be very close to the edge of the screen and go be squeezed in like this. And then it is a little bit generous in how much it lets you touch the edges. Again, on the C64 version, the same thing. It's letting me touch the edges without punishing me. But there is a point where you will die. Yeah, there, lots of level there. Oh! A bit too much. And a bit too difficult to distinguish what's background and what's foreground, to be honest. Yeah, but it's the end of level, baddie. Look at it. Ah! Isn't this one you see in our time? Or something like it? Over to the Amiga. Oh, it's Mr. Heli! <laughs> Little helicopters. Catechist lives. Hooray. Love that. Two fingers up to the squares who didn't want this game released. Just a shame this isn't a standalone game on the C64 and Amiga. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Yeah, okay, getting lost in the background, but look at it. It's gorgeous. Love it. On to level four. And your ship crashes down there. Knocking things uh, flying. And sadly, we're back in the run and gun section, which seems a letdown after all that glorious action with no music. Same thing on the Amiga. Cheat my way out. And to remind you, I don't get any further on the PC or the ST versions because, well, Warren Pilkerton played on the PC version for me very kindly using emulation because no cheats available or that we could find. Back on the Amstrad version, this is the final level of the game. I've skipped forward a little bit because otherwise you're going to be seeing lots and lots of run and gun action. And it, it is unfortunately a little bit samey after a while. In this level, you have to be careful of the Geiger-type monsters because they will eat you and kill you. And suddenly on this section, you have to find the right area to activate the kind of lift to lift you up because you start floating towards the end of game baddie. Like some kind of anti-gravity thing. Here he comes! Mentioning some of the other versions, by the way, Zap gave the C64 version that we're looking at now 96%, and Zero gave the ST version 91%, and that was Duncan McDonald of your Sinclair fame doing that. On the Amstrad version, this is the end of the level baddie for the end of the game. He's huge! And that was the Spectrum version. Unfortunately, I played it, and then I snapshotted it so I could show you later, and the snapshot broke, so you can only see a stir of this, I'm afraid. But we're back on the 64, and there's the end of game baddie destroyed. He takes a lot of shots to do that. So we get lots of points, and then we get the end of game sequence. And I'm only going to show you the C64 version. And the Spectrum and CPC are very basic game endings, but the C64 version is the way to go with the explosion. And then the congratulations message with a massive scroll with thank yous and an explanation of the plot line. Turrican 2, a follow-up to an iconic first game. And how do you better something like that? Well, on the Amiga and ST, fairly easily. You take what's superb, you add more bells and whistles, but there's so much hidden depth to this game. And it's such a wow factor game. It gets a little bit lost among the games people were talking about at the time, like Shadow of the Beast. We just have those massive baddies and just that impressive color on the Amiga and the scrolling, and even on the ST, where the resources are more limited, you've still got many, many more colours than the system should technically be able to show. 
Yes, underneath that, the gameplay is a little bit samey and repetitive and a repetition of the original version at times, but I think that's nitpicking. The PC version seems to be a completely faithful port of the Amiga. The graphics are a little bit too cutesy at times, especially that main character, and yeah, it's many years too late to have made an impact. 8-bit version C64 is the lead version. It's the version that every other version is based on. That said, where's the music? Come on, we need a thumping soundtrack to help push this game along. And as I say, you will need a disc or cartridge version of the game. Forget tapes, forget it. Spectral Amstrad, admirable attempts. I was really impressed with the Amstrad action demo of the first or first section of level one when I got it. But actually, you know what? That demo gives you the best part of the game. So if you've played that, then that's really all you need to see of Talokan 2. And as the game goes on on both the Spectrum and Amstrad versions, it becomes a little bit boring. And it has to be said, the game has a lot of insta-death moments where you need to memorise where bandies are or you jump onto things and they collapse away. It's not as bad as a bit dangerous, but sometimes it really is getting there. Those quibbles aside, certainly on the Amiga, the PC, the ST and the C64, this is an iconic game. A game that everyone needs to play, especially that Amiga version. Overall, Z80 version is a little bit disappointing. C64 version is the lead, but it really needs a soundtrack on there. It's, I think that's unforgivable. And for me, the pick of the crop is obviously the Amiga. Even if the PC version does have extra colours, you need that Amiga version in your life. For me, it's one of the defining games of that era.